everywhere I go, uh, I, I run into people who are interested in making a little more peace in, in their own world, to create a bit more harmony among the different parts of their lives and to help other people to do the same. And that is what I want to focus on. This approach that I want to share with you and bring to life in your world, so I'm, this is not going to be just me talking at you, I'm hoping and expecting that you will participate actively in, uh, in, this, in this hour, uh, about what it means for you to improve performance in the different parts of your life. To, to, to think about how you might be able to, in your real world now, pursue what I call four-way wins, and that is improved performance at work, at home, in the community, and for yourself personally. And I'm going to be provoking you with some, some questions, what, what my daughter, now 24, she still refers to my questions as annoying questions. So I'll be, I'll be offering you a couple of those that I, I hope that you'll be open to, to exploring with me. This is about leadership from the point of view of the whole person. So this is not about executive authority. It's about bringing others along with you to some better place. Mobilizing people toward valued goals. That's how I like to think about what leadership is. What I'm asking you to do now is to take a snapshot. So think about your work, your career, maybe you're in school, that part of your life, your home or family, whatever that is to you. Your community, that's your role as a citizen, your friends, neighbors, social groups, uh, religious groups everything beyond work and family. And then there is the domain of your private self, your mind, body, spirit. In the first column, take 100 points and allocate them according to how important each domain is to you right now, totaling 100. How important, not where you focus your attention or spend your time, just how important is your work to you, your home, your community, your private self? Just write those numbers down. Now, if your boss is sitting next to you, it's, it's 100, zero, zero, zero. And what I hope and expect will start to happen, and this is where we'll spend the rest of our time, is that ideas will start to pop about things that you might try to better align what's important with what you do every day, and thereby improve performance in all the different parts, and that's where we're headed, is for you to design a, a game plan and a scorecard for how to actually do that. So when we studied, the people who are good at this, they do three things. Uh, in different ways, in each in their own style, but they, they adhere to these principles of being real, acting with authenticity by clarifying what matters most to them, their values, their vision. The second is to be whole, uh, to recognize and respect the whole person, and to be innovative, to be continually exper experimenting with different ways of getting things done. It all starts and ends with what do you care about, what matters most to you, and being honest about that. Imagine not just where is your attention, but imagine where is your heart, where are your values at work, what you're pursuing, what your interests are, what you care about. Are those consistent with who you are and what you want to try to accomplish with your family? with your community, in your private moments? Are they aligned or are they not? Who are the people who matter most to you? And why do they matter? How do they fit with what matters most to you? How well are you doing in meeting those expectations? But first, what are those expectations? What are they? What do they need from you? And then, what do you need from them? And when you do this exercise, it doesn't take long you start to see your world the, the, that surrounds you in the immediate as a, as a live, vibrant social system that you can impact. You can have an influence on it. You can change it. And you can discover where there's compatibility among the different parts. How does what your mother expects of you, how is that consistent with what your clients expect of you, or your friends, yourself? And where is their conflict? And what can you do to create better alignment, greater sense of harmony? Can you change something in another part of your life that would help you close the gap in this one? What do I mean by that? Can you change something at work that's going to make you a better mother, sister, friend? 
Can you change something in your personal life that would make you a better boss? These start to be really fun and interesting questions as you generate ideas for innovation. The hardest part of this process is to then have conversations with those people, what I call stakeholder dialogues, the intent of which is to discover what they actually think. Because you think you know what they think, you don't know exactly what they think. You have some estimate as to what you think they need of you. But you don't really know until you ask them. And my experience is that most people don't ask. At least they don't ask regularly enough. They don't keep those communication channels open. So I would encourage you to have conversations with those key stakeholders. And imagine doing that in a, in a concentrated period of a few weeks where you spoke to the dozen most important people in your world to try to clarify what they really expect of you. If you do nothing coming out of this session today other than to say to the people around you that they matter to you, I mean, that would be, that would be worth the price of admission. But let's just, let's just take it a little further. Here's what I think is important to you, Greg. And I lay out the four things that I think are most important to him, A, B, C, and D. And he says, Stu, this is awesome. I'm so glad we're doing this. I, 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 this is great. Thank you. And I appreciate your thinking about it. Yeah, those, those four things that you just mentioned? Actually, the first two, super important. If you hadn't mentioned those, I think that there was something wrong with you. So, like, yeah. But the third and fourth things that you mentioned, not that important. But I'm spending so much time and energy trying to make life good for you on those C and D items. And you're telling me they don't matter? Don't really matter. Wow. Here's why I thought they mattered. You tell me why they don't. What did I miss? See how my hands are open here? I'm inquiring about what it is that I missed. And notice how I didn't come into this conversation saying, Greg, <clears throat> don't want to talk about all the ways in which you have disappointed me <laughs> in the past. You, you know what I'm talking about. We're not going to do that. We look forward. Because I'm open, non-defensive, inquiring, Greg says to me, well, actually, you know, there's a third thing that you didn't mention, another thing that I'd like to tell you about. Tell me, Greg, what is it? And he tells me, and I inquire further. Tell me more about that. Why is that important to you? How can I help you with that? And I discover this other thing. <clears throat> this is how these conversations almost always go. You're partly right, and you're partly missing something really important. I went into the conversation with worried about these four things just for Greg, among, you know, like the many other people that I worry about every day. So we're just looking at Greg now. And I come out with these three. I am smarter now about what he actually cares about. I can be more focused on devoting my precious attention to the things that he really cares about and stop wasting time on the things that don't. People see that you care about them, that you want to know their worldview, and that you're open to being corrected. People who are good at this, they're constantly experimenting. So let's design an experiment. An experiment that is intended to be an innovation, so you're practicing the skills of innovation, which you could never be too good at, because that is, of course, what the world needs of all of us, to be continually inventing better and better ways of getting things done for us, for the people around us. An innovation that's designed to make things better in all the different parts of your life, to improve results and performance in the different parts, to mobilize people, to come with you, into the future, to pursue goals that matter to you and to them, and not just at work, and to find new ways of how you actually do this, to start to train your mind to think about where are those four way win opportunities. And when you try actually doing it, you discover ways of making that happen. There's a huge research literature on how do people make big change. Everybody knows this. It's baby steps towards a big idea. Big change and accumulation of small wins. That's what I'm going to ask you to design now. So you're moving down a path that you choose toward that vision. You break it down into small, measurable chunks. You act on what you can. Not on what's outside of your control, but what you can control. And that, that builds confidence and momentum. You start to move. And you realize, OK, I can take another step. And when you do that, and you check in with the people around you, they realize, all right, this isn't, this isn't destroying my universe. I'll let them keep going. In fact, it might even be good for me. 
So you reduce that resistance in the world around you. You start to feel less guilty, less afraid, and you discover you've got a lot more freedom than you thought. So, so Greg, let's say you're my boss, and I say, Greg, what I'd like to try for the next month is on Tuesday afternoons, I want to take off for just a few hours. Um, you know, after 3 o'clock, I'm going to be offline. And I expect, Greg, that over the next month, you're going to see an improvement in my performance as a result of my doing that because I'll be able to take care of some things that matter to me in other parts of my life, and I'll be less distracted. Would you be willing to just try that for a month? And if it doesn't work, uh, work out, we'll go back to the way things are now where you've got the 24-7, 365 hookup into my intravenous... <laughs> leave, leave that last part out. You're, you'd be willing to try that, Greg, because I'm doing this for you and for me. So you just try it. And that's the power of the term experiment. Let's just try it. It's a different kind of conversation. You're bringing other people along with you. That's where every learning journey has to go. What do you discover? What do you learn about what it means for you as a leader to create change that is indeed sustainable? People start to think differently. They start to see how you don't have to always be trading one for the other. And they start seeing where there is opportunity in their world for pursuing wins in all the different domains. And they don't look over opportunities to capture the value from one part of their lives and bring it to bear on the others. You start to see ways of capturing value and creating a little bit more peace, a little more harmony. When I started the Work-Life Integration Project in 1991 at the Wharton School, the first of its kind in any business school, we called it the Integration Project because we wanted to get people not thinking about balance so much. But integration, harmony, fit, Words that don't connote this, this trade-off. Because when you think about balance, here's the metaphor, right? Work. Going great. More money, more power, more problems. Right? You're doing great here, more challenge, more opportunity, more growth. But what's happening here in the other part of your life? That's the balance metaphor. So that's why I prefer the metaphor, to get back to your very important question, of the jazz quartet. The jazz quartet, you've got these four different instruments, and sometimes you only hear the trumpet soloing. Sometimes it's just the bass and the drums. The others are resting. That's the musical term, rest. But they're highly responsive. If you've ever watched a jazz quartet, a great jazz quartet, the drummer is watching the other three players very carefully while trying to keep the rhythm and doing all the inventive things that, that, that he's doing. <clears throat> they're responsive to each other, and they've got a theme that they're trying to develop over the course of time. And that's how I like to think about the integration of work and the rest of life. Over the course of your life, you're trying to bring harmony, like a great jazz quartet. People start to see a greater sense of purpose in what they do. They feel more connected and more hopeful and optimistic, because they see how there's opportunity, there's room for making things better, and the results that they see are in both. You're happier, and that spills over. You, you feel more inspired. You're also less distracted because you're caring for the other parts of your life, and you're more focused on the things that really matter. It's not that complicated, and yet it is uncommon for people to think that way. I hope that you will start to think more in this way, to have a better life by being a better leader, and to be a better leader by having a richer life. That's the idea here. To, for you to be creating sustainable change to improve performance in all the different parts of your life and to pursue these four-way wins and perhaps more importantly, help other people to do the same. I wrote these profiles, original profiles of these six people to show how they use these principles and skills in their own lives and what they demonstrate is that significant achievement in the world comes from taking what is unique to you and bringing it to the world in a way that helps other people. That's what frees you to lead the life you want. And that accomplishment in career comes not by sacrificing, not at the expense of the rest of your life, but because of the
the commitments that you make to the people and projects the things that matter most to you in all the different parts of your life. That's what gives you strength. That's what gives you the will to persist in the face of adversity and resistance and all the haters. That's where they get the strength from. And the really good news is that anyone, anyone can cultivate these skills. Thank you so much for your attention here this morning. I hope you have a great day. I really appreciate your listening. Thank you.